Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Have you ever wanted Bluetooth cat control for your Yezu radio? Well, that's doable. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So a couple months back, a patron of mine sent me a link to a Bluetooth cat control device that he found on eBay, and he'd gone ahead and purchased it and been playing with it and had good luck. So I decided to go ahead and order one for myself and give it a test run. Uh, so if you head over to ebay.com and you just do a search for Bluetooth Yezu 857, you'll get a list of returns. Now there's a lot of different sellers and I can't re uh, recommend any particular one, but this one like you see here on the screen, let's go ahead and click into that. This is the one uh, that I purchased. I don't remember if it was from this particular seller or not, but this is the one that we'll be working with today in the video. And this works for the Yezu 817, uh, the Yezu 857 and 897. Uh, it also says it works with the FT100D. I have uh, had an opportunity to try that because I don't own that particular radio. But I have tested this on both the 817, which is what we'll be working with today, and the 857, and it works great for both of those. So let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. Now, I'll be showing you a couple of different ways to get this working today. First, we'll go about it uh, kind of the longhand way, and then I'll introduce you to a script that I've written that will make this much easier. If you aren't interested in seeing the longhand version, I'll leave a timestamp right here on the screen so that you can jump to the installation of the script instead. But the first thing you're going to want to do uh, with either of these methods is come right up to your Bluetooth indicator in the top right corner of your screen. We'll go ahead and click on that and click add a device. Now it may pop up a lot of different devices so just let it kind of sit here and scan for a second and eventually you should see the Bluetooth device pop up. What you're looking for is this device right here. Well, and it jumped off the screen. Let's try that again, SPPCA. So I'll go ahead and highlight that and click pair. And it will give you this device asking for a pin code. And I have found that one, two, three, four works well for this. We'll go ahead and click okay. It'll tell us that it's paired successfully, but it has no services which can be used on this Raspberry Pi. Yeah, well, I don't really believe you. All right, so opening up the terminal window, the first thing we want to run is HCI tool space scan. And we'll go ahead and press return, and we'll give that uh, a, just a second to scan for the device. Once the scan is complete, you want to type in this command, sudo space rf com space connect space forward slash dev forward slash rf com 7. You want to give it a space after the 7 and then we're going to copy and paste the MAC address. I'm just going to highlight it. I'm going to right click and click copy and then I'll go right here and click paste. After we get that pasted in, let's go ahead and press return and you should be presented with this, where it tells you that uh, RFCOM 7 and the MAC address on channel 1 has been connected, and you can press Control c for hang-up. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and configure FL Rig. So I'm just going to jump up to my ham radio menu, and I'm going to find FL Rig. I'll go ahead and click on that. Let's move that over. I'm going to choose Config, setup and transceiver. Now in this particular case I am using the Yezu 817 so I'm going to come down to where I find uh, 817, highlight it. 
I'm going to choose forward slash dev forward slash rfcom0. Now, if you open this list, you will have to scroll to the very bottom, probably, to find this the first time. But you can just click it. Now, it is critical that you set the baud rate to 9600. You also need to make sure that it's set to 9600 in uh, your radio as well. Uh, the rest of this we can leave at default. Once we get that, let's just press initialize. And then we can close out this screen here. At this point, the radio is configured and uh, is pulling everything in correctly over that new Bluetooth connection. Now, if I press the PTT button on the screen here, you will see the radio go into PTT mode. So we have everything up and running, but this is a little cumbersome to have to go through this HCI tool scan each time and then uh, to remember this long string of, uh, or this long command right here. That's just a little cumbersome. Well, I felt there was a better way to do this. So with the help of uh, one of my patrons, we came up with a script to make this quite a bit easier. So now to show you how to get this script installed and configured, let's go ahead and jump over to the GitHub site. That's github.com forward slash km4ack. Once you get on this page, you're going to come right here and click on PyScripts. Once this page loads up, you're going to be looking for the script that is named btflrig. Let's go ahead and click on that. Once this page loads up, be certain that you click the raw button. If you miss this step, uh, nothing is going to work correctly for you. Once you've clicked on the raw button, you'll be presented with a page like this that is a plain text page. Come right up to the very top. We're going to highlight that address and press Control C to copy that. Now that we've got that copied, let's go ahead and move over to our terminal window again. Now, I'm running Buildapy here, so I have my own uh, personal bin directory. If you're running Buildapy, you'll have this same directory. So, from your home directory, and if you're uncertain if you're in your home directory or not, you can always just type CD and press return. That dumps you into your home directory. From there, let's run CD space bin. Go ahead and press return. Once we're in our bin directory, let's use our wget command, and then I'm going to right-click and paste in the link that we just copied. Let's go ahead and press return there, and it only takes it a second to download. Let me clear that screen, and I'll go ahead and list out that directory. You can see Bluetooth rig right here, or Bluetooth FL rig, rather, uh, and it's in gray. We need to make that executable, so we'll do that with the command chmod plus x space bluetooth fl rig, or bt fl rig rather. We'll go ahead and press return. If we run that ls command again, you'll see that bt fl rig is now in green. Now, the first command we want to run is bt fl rig space help. And we'll go ahead and press return. This is going to give you a help file that uh, if you need uh, a little bit of help configuring things on your Raspberry Pi, this has everything that you need in it. Now, it'll tell you uh, the first setup is to go ahead and use the GUI interface, which is up by the clock, uh, the Bluetooth GUI interface. That's the one we used earlier in the radio, and we've already entered that passcode one, two, three, four. So the next thing we're going to run is going to be blue, uh, BT FL rig space scan. So I'm going to go ahead and press Q to get out of this file. And it'll ask me if I want to put that uh, help document on my desktop. I'll go ahead and tell it yes so that it puts the help file on my desktop. Now let's run uh, BT FL rig scan. What this is going to do is this is going to scan for the device and go ahead and create the files needed in order to connect to it faster after this first 
uh, scan. Now, occasionally the first scan will fail to run. Uh, it won't be able to find it. I don't know why, but I have seen that happen from time to time. If that does happen to you, you can run the BTFL rig space scan command again. Uh, but since ours completed correctly here, it tells us next to run BTFL rig menu. We'll go ahead and press return. And it has created a new menu item called BTFL rig. So let's go ahead and go up to our start menu, come down to ham radio, and you'll see the one that says BTFL rig. We'll go ahead and click on that, and that will open up FL rig. At this point, you can go ahead and configure this just like we did before. So setup and transceiver. Under your configuration file, let's go ahead and select the 817 again. We're going to give it forward slash dev forward slash rfcom7 in this window right here. And again, make sure your baud rate is set to 9600 both here and in your radio itself. That's your, I believe it's called your cat rate inside the radio but you got to make sure that all of those are set to 9600 and then go ahead and press initialize finally we can go ahead and close out of this screen and once again if we press the ptt button here you will see the red light come on on the radio so that takes care of getting FL Rig configured with this Bluetooth CAT controller. Now, one thing about FL Rig that I have found uh, that I run into quite often, if I close this right now with the X, it will not often uh, save my configuration file. So the best thing to do is come up here and click File and Exit. And that seems to write everything out correctly so that when we open it again, all of our configurations are saved. So there you have it, guys. That's how you configure Bluetooth cat control on your Yaesu radio. If you found this video helpful, be sure to click the thumbs up before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.